We are here today to talk about some hunting knives. And this is just a classic, 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 knife. classic. Yeah, like my grandpa had one, my dad had one, everybody I know had one of these knives growing up. How's it going guys? We are here today to talk about some hunting knives. And uh, I know a lot about knives, not a ton about hunting. So I brought in some guys from Mountain Ops. We've got Jake, we've got Matt. Hey These guys know a lot about hunting and a little bit about knives. So with Happy. our powers combined, hopefully. <laughs> Happy medium, right? <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> we'll be able to bring you something awesome. Um, what we're gonna be doing guys is we're gonna be going through some fixed blades. We're gonna be going through some uh, specific use knives, some folders, some sharpeners. We've got an epic giveaway at the end of this video. And uh, I think let's just jump right in. Let's do her. Sounds awesome, good. right on. So the first one on the docket we've got is, uh, we're, going, we're going low to high here. So on all of these, that's the way we're gonna be rolling. So the, what we've got first is we've got the Cold Steel Pendleton Light Hunter. Now uh, this thing here goes for about 17 bucks. It's a good little knife. It's kind of got that Mora style plastic sheath and uh, just kind of a great little knife all the way around if you're looking for something that's budget. It's got a pretty good belly on it uh, for skinning and stuff like that. I hear that's something that you're looking for when you're looking at a hunting knife. Yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, nine, nine times out of 10, or if you are successful enough in, in filling your tag, you're, you're gonna be pulling some skin off an animal, so that is an extremely important part or aspect of a blade, yep, especially for sure. hunting. For sure, and that's actually one thing with hunting in general, um, when we're talking about blades in hunting, is with hunting knives, most hunters, you guys aren't stressing super steels, you guys aren't stressing Kind of a functionality. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a what lot we of look for in the in the EDC world, or a lot of what our viewers are looking at, is you know, well, well how good is the steel? Do I have to sharpen it all the time? That type of thing. Mm -hmm. But in the field, a softer a softer steel actually is more useful because it's easier sharpen. to field sharpen, yep. right? Exactly. Yeah, One hundred percent. So yeah, so this this Cold Steel Pendleton Light Hunter, um, you know, definitely a budget entry into the hunting world, but no great, great little fixed blade. No doubt um, about it. It's it's a popular one. Uh, next up. We've got, guys, I'm gonna be flipping papers the whole time because look at all these knives. No way I can remember all the names and prices here. <laughs> nope. So <laughs> next up we got the Steel Wheel Roamer. And this is this is a Skinner fixed blade. This one goes for about 50 bucks. Again, you guys know the drill. Like Check the website out, you know, as the prices are on the website. So right around 50 bucks. So again, you got a, a plastic or FRI handle. Um, Nice big blade with a good big belly on there. Now you were saying you like this. What is it that you like? I just like one? fixed blades. Okay, I, yeah. I like that aspect of the blade. I don't know. I just have always liked that. So yeah, um, I haven't really used them for hunting, me personally. Um, but I just I have tons of them, and I just don't ever take them out. Awesome. I don't know. Awesome. <laughs> one thing that I love about this one is I feel like if you were to get into an animal, obviously your hands are going to get slippery, right? Absolutely. Um, I feel like this has got a really great grip. I mean, with your guys' experience, what do you think about that? Absolutely. Yeah, I like how. It's really durable. You can tell you could really get into it. I like that curve on it for sure. Um, it's just a little too heavy for me to take out because I'm going in a lot of miles in the back country. Yep. Um, and so it wouldn't make sense for me to take that heavy of a knife. Yeah, and that's and that's another big consideration, right? With with hunting knives is right. is weight, right? <clears throat> because every ounce counts when you're ounces 10, are, 15 miles. Yeah, ounces are pounds, and pounds means it's heavy, and that means it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've heard this statement: ounces are pounds, and pounds are pain, but. I, Ounces or pounds, pounds is strength, right? It makes you stronger, right? Yeah, but I like to uh, go in light. <laughs> there you go. Go come in out light heavy. and come out heavy. There you go, because exactly. you feel that yep. tag. Okay, I got you, I got you. No, definitely a great shape of the blade, and I like things, I mean, grip on anything from a, from a bow to a rifle to a knife, I mean, grip's a really big deal for me, um, especially if you're inside of an animal, if you're gutting it or cutting it apart. Um, I've had experience with smaller knives where it slipped out of my hand. So something kind of big and meaty like this, I think has its definitely has its place within certain aspects of hunting. Maybe if you're doing, you're hunting out of a lodge or you're on a pack trip and you have horses and you can take more gear with you. For sure. I could see this having a better place. But as far as Jake's and I style of hunting, what we normally do, we're hunting out of a backpack, trying to keep it under 50 pounds at the most at a couple days, water, all that stuff, ounces or pounds. So. Yep. I probably wouldn't take this in my wouldn't pack, take personally. This one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfectly. But uh, yeah, this is this is. Uh, I think this has a great feel too. And the other yeah. awesome thing with the steel wheel is it comes with leather case, which yep. is pretty sweet. Um, I'm 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 really big about how my sheaths are. Case, I call it a case. It's a sheath. <laughs> sheath. Scabbard. <laughs> Maybe I know about knives. I don't know. We're gonna find out today, I guess. Um, but no, I really like I really like the leather sheath thing personally myself, and so I think it's a good good addition to that steel yeah. wheel. Um, and our photographer, he, he does quite a bit of hunting as well, and uh, that was one that he gravitated to. But he said the same thing. He says, if I was, if I was on a tag where I knew I'd be easy access, 
that would be if I'm hunting out of my truck and I'm yeah. hunting a mile or exactly. whatever from it, it's like at the end of the day, who cares? But if I'm back country, a little heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'd agree. Um, so the next one up, guys, this is this is a knife that I used a ton <clears> as a kid in these types of situations. This and the Buck 110 regular, not the auto. Um, this is Buck, Buck 119. Uh, this is the hunt. This is just a classic, 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 classic. I'm a classic man. Yeah, like my grandpa had one, my dad had one, everybody I know had one of these knives growing up. And it was like, it was one of those things. Like, if your grandpa gave you a knife, I think, I mean, I grew up in a little small town called Heber City here in Utah. Yeah. And I remember my first knife that my dad gave to me, right? I grew up on a farm, so you had to cut hay bales, you had to do all sorts of things. And the first one I got, was a buck. Was knife. a buck. Yep, yep, that was my first hunting knife. Exactly. Yeah, my the first knife my grandpa gave me was a little Barlow. The first one my dad gave me was a buck one ten folder. Yep. <laughs> that was exactly. just a was for the scouting old timer. or whatever. The, the old timer. timer. Yep, the old that's timer. another another classic. So yeah. <laughs> so this this buck one nineteen super classic hunting knife. I know a lot of guys that still hunt with these. Um, oh, we actually yeah. uh, Brian, our our guy up in HR, he's got a uh, folder buck folder that he uses yep. still to this day. Um, all of his hunting trips and everything. Yep. Uh, so really great knife. Again, leather sheath. Made here in the United States in Idaho, which is pretty sweet, and uh, these things go for right around fifty-five bucks. That's not bad. So again, great, great yeah. little addition, you know. And it's it's tried and true. That's the other cool thing with the buck is you yeah. know the traditions there. A little bit of nostalgia to it, right? Exactly. Um, now from the buck, we're gonna go. So we've, we've we've looked at some lower end. We looked at some kind of heavier knives, some classic knives. Yep. Now we're gonna jump into the future. Into the future. And, yeah. and <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the future. Um, and this is so I this like is, the future. Yeah, you. you know, yeah. Matt's a big fan of this. So this is the Benchmade, or Jake's a big fan of this. Yes. Backwards here. Um, <laughs> so this is the Benchmade Altitude. Um, this one goes for right around 190 bucks, 195 bucks. So it, it costs a couple bucks for sure. And uh, I know a lot of you guys out there uh, saw this at Shot Show, and they were like, "Why?" So so I'm gonna ask you why. Well, you're, you're stoked on this knife. So I you am. Tell me. I'm stoked on yeah, yeah. it. I like fixed blades. Um, that's just what I like. I've always liked them. Um, the only issue I see with this is, you know, in your hand, it could it could slip potentially. Right. If I'm gutting an animal, um, and that kind of scares me. I actually have a photographer, our photographer at Mountain Ops, who had that issue with this uh, knife. With this okay. exact knife. Yeah, yeah. I don't have this knife. I want it. But, yeah. Um, well, we might we, have to see what we can do when we're all done. Yeah, right, <laughs> right on. <laughs> but he told me that um, from his experience. Didn't slow me down. I still want it. Um, what would make it better probably is maybe wrapping some paracord or something like that around it so you have a that's little bit grip, more. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's grip. what I was going to ask. I've seen a lot of guys who are using this in the field. There's a lot of guys who are stoked on this knife, um, like full-fledged hunters that are stoked on this knife. And a lot of them have wrapped it in the paracord. So, I, does your does your photographer is his wrapped? You know, uh, I don't know. I'm oh, not okay. sure. I don't, I don't think, think I don't think Dave's is. No, interesting. No. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, no. But yeah, I like it just for the same reason I would like those other bigger ones. Right. But this one is a lot lighter and a right, lot exactly. smaller, more compact. So for that, I actually really like this. Yeah, I've noticed um, there's some guys who who hunt with Hoyt, which is a bow company. And uh, they've been carrying this thing around as well, right? Yep, yep. I actually yeah, worked at Hoyt for about five years before I came over, so definitely been exposed to all that. And I can right understand, on. and my whole thought originally when you asked that question is like, why are people drawn to a $300 knife? Well, if you think knife people are crazy about gear, you ought to get <laughs> oh going on because they geek out. I'm talking, I mean, Hoyt makes a $1,600 carbon bow. Wow. So it's like there's very high-end gear and high-end sales in the hunting space. So a three hundred dollar knife, you guys are like, yeah, whatever, I'll buy a knife. Yeah. So Literally I think that mentality of the buyer is already there. So Benchmade made a really smart move, and I mean, got a cool. camo. Yeah, you got you got the camo, the camo for hunting, and then the orange safety. You know, this was exactly. actually I talked to the guy who had a lot of say in the design on this, and this was he's like, yeah, when you drop it, you'll be able to see it. Right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, I do if like the orange. If you're out working sure. in the field and you drop it in some brush, you'll be able to no see doubt. it. No doubt. So yeah, pretty pretty cool knife. Pretty cool knife. Um, it's definitely it's definitely been one that's that's had a, an interesting reception in the knife world, but it's good to sit down with some guys who are hunting and see kind of that kind of the other side of the table. Exactly. Right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, guys. So that's kind of what we got in the fixed blade. Now, obviously, that's not an exhaust completely exhaustive list, but what we wanted to hit with some budget. We wanted to hit some classic, and we wanted to hit what the future looks like. If you get on bladehq.com, there are a trillion more options of fixed blade knives for hunting. Can't wait to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the so black hole. Next, we're gonna jump into some more specialty knives. Um, and we're gonna start, again, starting budget. We're gonna start with the Kershaw Lone Rock. And this is the large with the gut hook built into it. This knife goes for right around 12 bucks. So definitely an inexpensive knife. Very easy to jump in if you're just looking for something cheap to be able to go out and uh, go hunting with. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, just classic all the way around. It's got a rubberized grip. Um, full belly here and then a nice gut hook on it as well. 
So just kind of classic. And then it's got this jimping that's kind of higher up on the on the back of the blade there. And then that's so you can get I a, like that a good, on it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A good grip up here, or even if you're doing detailed work yep. here, right? Usually that's how I like to, if I'm inside of an animal trying to get the diaphragm, I want to know where that blade is at all times. So I put my pointer finger on the top yeah. and I'm kind of just carving around in there. So that's really nice. I, I look at the gut hook though and how close it is to the point. Like obviously when you're starting into an animal, you're going to make an incision and that gut hook, it's just so far forward, I could see that getting caught on stuff. Okay, yeah. Maybe uh, popping some things you don't want to pop when you're cleaning an animal. Right, you want to be careful, it a little yeah. extra dirty. There's things you want to be very want careful to. at that. So yeah, yeah. I can see that maybe being a con of that, but the overall, I mean, for the price, what, 12 bucks 12 or whatever. Bucks. Yeah, yeah. Got the nice rubberized grip. I think that's a great starter option. Cool, that's great. That's really cheap for that. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's honestly good all the way around. And then, you know, again, uh, it's 8CR 13 MOV. So you guys know that's not the most super steel in the world, but this thing will go out, you'll be able to field sharpen it, and you'll be able to keep working an animal if, if you're lucky enough to tag out. Exactly. So, um, and that's something to consider is you don't always want, I mean, even some of those super steels that we have out there, guys, they're they're more prone to rust. Um, and when you're working an animal, you don't want something that's, that's gonna be prone to rust, for sure. Well, right? the elements that you're hunting in, it's yep. like you're hunting in the rain, you're hunting in the snow, it's like whatever mother nature's gonna throw at you, you gotta have gear that's gonna stand up to that. Oh, for sure. Exactly, yeah. Um, all right, so the next up is part of the Gerber, Gerber Vital series. Now, Gerber has a whole line, a uh, vital line of hunting knives. Um, we've got just a couple on the table to highlight kind of what they offer. And uh, this isn't a knife. No, <laughs> no. it is not. So, so tell, me, tell me about this. What, what would you use this for in the field? This is called the, the Gerber Vital Zip Utility Knife. It goes for about 14 bucks. I think, I think the word zip is very descriptive of what it does. If you were to think of processing an animal, um, a lot of times when you're, almost like when you're gutting a fish, right, you're gonna start down low and you're gonna go from south to north and it's kind of the same deal on an elk. Something like this where you can get the skin off and not actually puncture, puncture the internal organs, that's super, super important. So that's why, I mean, a gut hook like that's okay. I've used these before and they rip right through them. Um, they're also really nice if you're caping an animal, especially elk, so you're coming from basically the middle of the back to the back of their head and that skin gets really thick and really fatty. It's amazing a knife like how this, thick it oh, can it's be. unbelievable. An elk cape is, they'll weigh up to 150 pounds, wow. just the cape with the yeah. fat skin on it in addition to the head. So something like this is extremely, extremely useful. This is something that I would personally take in my pack if I was planning on hunting a trophy bull and knew that I was gonna probably take that head out with me in addition to the meat and everything else that animal provides. But So it looks um, like that's replaceable as well, right? Yep, got a yeah, replaceable that's, blade. That's an awesome thing with a lot of the Vital <clears throat> series is they do have a replaceable blade. And that's actually why I had the sheath out for this one. Because I think replaceable blade is great, but if you don't have somewhere to put them, what's, you know, it's, it's a hard thing. You don't want a bunch of razor right, blades. Right, we were kind of, we were kind of talking pack. about that. Exactly. Before. That's so definitely a con. So yeah. So that. this one's pretty sweet because in this case, it does have a little pouch and a plastic container to put those extra blades in. That's awesome. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's a great little thing, design. I look at this right. You're gonna have to have a Phillips head screwdriver on you yep. to yeah. be able to chase that. So it's like, so who wants to carry a screwdriver and a knife and then another knife? You got to factor that Something in your thought think process. About. Yep. For sure. For sure. Cool. But overall, a, a zip tool is, is a handy tool to have while you're out in the Very, field. very useful to have, cool. especially when you are get an animal down and you don't want to get into those guts. Yeah, I mean, that'll totally. spoil your meat, it'll spoil your clothes, your nose, everything. everything. <laughs> it's, yeah, not it's not, not a pleasant experience. <laughs> right no doubt about it. All right, so moving on uh, to, again, a, a little more of a, a more hunting specific tool. So this is also from the Gerber Vital series, as you can tell from the color and everything. It goes for about 20 bucks and this is a pack saw. Yep. Here. So with with something like this, do you guys tend to pack in a saw every hunt or some hunts, not all the time? Honestly, personally, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. I can see where it could be useful, like when you're actually quartering an animal mm -hmm. and you really have to get in down there in the joint, sometimes it'd be easier to have a saw to yeah. get through that quicker. Um, you can do it just with a regular blade, mm -hmm. but it would be helpful to have one. Again, it, I, that's my style of hunting is on, out of my pack. Yeah. So I don't use that, yeah. but I can see where it could be really useful. And for me, I, I can think of two applications of a saw like this. Um, one probably, if you're, if you're quartering an animal, a lot of times even with just a blade, kind of like what Jake was talking about, you can kind of pop that ball joint yeah. out and it just comes off. But a lot of people, they will cut an animal basically in half and take half on one part of the four-wheeler and half on the other. 
and a lot of times they'll split that leg and they've got to go through the hips of the animal. So that's where that comes into effect, as well as skull capping the animal. Um, yeah. A lot of times if you aren't going to, well, if you are going to shoulder mount it, you take the cape. Well, you don't need the entire head. You actually just need what the, the horns are sitting part. on. Um, I've broken them with rocks before because I literally right. only need this. So I've got a rock and I've kind of broken everything down and I've just smashed it. But a saw would obviously be a more uh, dynamic approach. Right, to, yeah, to, a little, yeah. to a little more of a that. delicate tool. <laughs> <laughs> Less barbaric in my opinion. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Um, and the other thing that's really nice about a lot of this vital stuff is it's purpose built. I mean, you've got this Very much so. extra grip on the back here, rubberized and plastic. And uh, I mean, it feels like that's not going anywhere regardless of how wet or yeah, not slippery slip. your hand's gonna yep. get. There's right. a lot of thought process I think that's yeah. definitely gone into these and for the price and their purpose and whatever your style of hunting is, I think they have a place in a lot of people's packs. Totally. For sure. um, awesome. Well, guys, we are gonna jump to a commercial break really quick and we will be right back. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you about a new exclusive knife that we have. It's the Boker Mini Quaken. This thing is awesome. It's got micarta scales, brass bolsters, designed by Lucas Burnley. Jump on bladehq.com and check it out. This thing is hot. All right guys, welcome back. And uh, from that commercial break, I personally bought one of those knives, so uh, you should check them out. They're pretty sweet. All right, so next up, we are halfway through our hunting knife extravaganza going on here. And uh, we're going to keep looking at some specialized knives for when you're hunting out in the field and you want a knife that'll do a little bit more than just a standard blade. So next up is the Outdoor Edge Swing Blaze Drop Point Skinner. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Right there. It's, got, it's, got, it's got a lot. It's got a yeah. lot. Uh, this thing goes for about uh, 50 bucks. Again, you got that. It's a nice rubberized handle. Um, good belly to the blade. Now the thing that sets this one apart and makes it a specialty knife is that there's a little button here. You can depress that button and you can swing out a gut hook. Mm -hmm. um, is that to is shave? Or, or, or? Yeah, I mean, you could use it to yeah. shave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the sweet thing about this is, so our camera guy, Jamie, he's also a pretty big hunter. Yep. Uh, he's from the Midwest and in the, so in the, kind of in the Western area uh, with hunting, mainly you guys just quarter and, and pull out your quarters, right? Yeah, like, we're pulling out the biggest you're, you're pieces not, of meat. You're not gutting or anything like that, right? No, no. exactly. We're trying yeah. to come out as light as possible. Exactly, yeah. but in the Midwest, with whitetail and stuff, they'll they'll gut a lot. Um, oh, absolutely. That's, that's just it's, the way you it's hunt a, in the Midwest. It's a gut and drag, right? The truck's exactly. probably 100 yards away. Exactly. At the end of the tree stand. And uh, so so that was something that, that our uh, our video guy, Jamie, said is that he loves about this is where with the Kershaw, you got that sharp point. You'd be a little more mindful with that. Yep. You got a dull point here, so no worries, right? Yeah. It makes yeah. perfect sense to me. The only thing, like for me, I guess we were talking about it a little bit, but I don't like I don't like sheaths. I don't oh, okay. especially because yeah. yeah. if I'm hunting out of a backpack, it's I'm not I'm not gonna strap that on my hip. I'm not gonna carry that on my hip. It's gotta either be in my pack, and at that point, that's extra weight that I don't want, and then they're kind of big and cumbersome. Yeah. So definitely functionality, it's got its place. I think most of these do, but in the Midwest, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great application out there. Maybe here, if you're backpack hunting, I don't know if this would be my choice, but totally, I, I, I understand the functionality of it. And I think a lot of process or thought process went into it. Love the orange handle. Again, we highlighted that earlier, but yep. it's you'll notice a lot of these knives are orange for that purpose, so you can't lose them when you drop them on the ground. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> that's the whole thing. <laughs> But yeah, no, and I, I like the way that it spins too. I mean, it's nice and free. It locks in there really well. Like, seems like a great little knife. Yeah. So that's another another special offering there from uh, from Outdoor Edge. And I always put them in backwards. Ooh, I put it in right, yay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the final knife that we have kind of in our, in our specialty range, guys, is the Top Knives Backwoods Skinner. Now, again, like I already mentioned, every one of these knives that we've seen, we have multiple variations. I mean, Tops in general, Tops makes a ton of other hunting knives. But this was one that had a special application that I think, and I wanted to get opinion from some pros about, yeah. is this guy right here. So this thing goes for about 120 bucks. Um, this has got the micarta handle on it. This is very common for tops with a, with a nice coated blade here. And this is purely Skinner. This yep, is what this 100%. Is what this is all about. Nice nice little leather sheath. So not a big leather sheath like you were nope. worried about, right? Nope. Um, so what do you guys think about this one? I, that, I got this here just because I wanted to hear what you guys had to say. Well, you know, when I first started hunting, I, I wasn't always backpack hunting. I grew up hunting and we would drive out in the truck. We would ride the horses. And if you were successful in hunting, we'd bring it back to the barn. A lot of times whole, you know, you'd roll them up in the back of the truck and then you'd bring them back to the barn and you'd hang them and you'd age the meat. You'd cover them with a sheet. So animals can't get to them or whatever. And a knife like that definitely has a place because when you're skinning an animal, you're not really, you're not cutting the skin, you're just sitting there slicing the fat. So with the belly of that blade, that long moon shape, you're gonna be able to 
do a lot of work really quickly and effectively yeah. in my mind. And that's so, and we you guys probably mentioned heard us mention on a lot of these knives. Oh, it's got a good belly, and that's one of the big reasons you want a good belly on a hunting knife. Absolutely, to be able to carve You're, away. It's, that it's high, a swiping. Yeah, I'm not basically. I'm not stabbing anything. I, I want <clears throat> that's that's a lot of area. It's very short and compact, but there's a lot of blade length. There's a lot of edge there in a short compact distance, right? So I'm getting a lot of mileage per stroke. Cool. Right on. Yeah, this was one I saw, and I was like, this looks very very purpose built. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's awesome. So yeah, guys, that's the uh, that's the Tops Knives Backwoods Skinner. Man, I feel like there's like hunting knives that just got long names. <laughs> oh yeah. What is it with you guys and your names here? <laughs> um, so next up, we're gonna jump into some folding knives. Now, do either of you? Now you mentioned you really like fixed blade, but you don't use fixed blade in the field. Are you using exactly. a folding knife in the this field a, then? This is what I prefer. Okay, right on. Uh, just the, being compact, uh, being able to interchange the blades. You know, when one gets dull, you can just hurry and. Some of them, you yeah. can quickly detach and, and put a new one on. For sure. That's why I like those, and they're really light. Cool, right on. So, so. jumping into the very first one we have, again, from that Gerber Vital series, uh, this is the Razor Fixed Blade Knife. And uh, like you were mentioning, some of these folders have a replaceable blade on them. Absolutely. And so with the Gerber, it's a really nice, easy process. Um, let's see if I can do it for camera. So there's a little release here. You just push down, and then that blade comes yeah, up that's and slick. out. Very smooth. Yeah, really, really slick. No worries in the field of, of you know, worrying about cutting your finger or anything on that razor nope. blade, which you definitely wouldn't want. I like that one way more than my other one. The one that you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one this one goes for about $26. Um, again, it's got the uh, all the great purchase that you would want and that we've seen on all the other Gerber Vital stuff. Yep. And it even has a pocket clip. So yeah. when you're talking about not having a lot of space, you throw this right in your pocket, no worries. Easy. My so, question yeah. on this one is where do, how do you hold the actual replaceable blades? Yeah, so one? that's that's actually a great question. So we saw with the zip the zip one that the Gerber Vital does, mm -hmm. it comes with a sheet that holds the blades. This one does not. The Gerber Vital Raider does not. So you do have the comes with extra little, blades. Little plastic case comes with extra blades, but nowhere to put them, which I, which I think is kind of interesting. So you could definitely put this. It's, you know, it's not going to crush. You could put this in your bag. I think I would want something a little more protective personally. Yeah, um, I would as well. I'd like for, to keep them together. together yeah, have them yeah, together, like exactly. A, like a case or something. Exactly, like be able to keep them together in a case. But um, it does come with replacement blades when you buy it brand new for 26 bucks, so not too bad of a deal. Yeah, yeah, how many bad. blades come with it? I know, I think, Ooh, yeah, I don't know. when we talk about the uh, Havilon, what are they, sure. six or something like yeah. that? I'd be curious to know how many are in there. Looks like one, two, yeah, looks like about, about six. I mean, about it looks six. about six. So Probably. yeah, right around so, six as well. I mean, when when I got my elk this year, I went through two blades. I don't know if that helps, but yeah, yeah that so I, minimum two. Then. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty par par for the course. I mean, if you were to use a fixed blade like I do, I probably have. I killed an elk in Idaho a couple of weeks ago, and I probably had to resharpen my knife five or six times. Yeah. Just through a pull through sharpener. That's my preference. Uh, oh, guys, don't. It's okay. It's okay. Uh -oh. It's okay. <laughs> I heard I'd get crucified for that, but <laughs> it's all about weight. It's we are. We're, weight. we're gonna functionality. Weight and functionality. We are gonna talk about some field sharpeners that won't make you cringe. But uh, yeah, he <laughs> uses a pull through. <laughs> <laughs> so five or six times, and uh, with with your fixed blade. Yep, exactly. Cool. And then you traded out two blades for the two blades. Using your yep, blade. right on. on a bullet. Awesome. Um, so now we had mentioned we mentioned Havilon. Um, you guys use Havilon, and uh, so we have Havilon yep. on the table. So this is the Havilon <clears throat> torch hunting knife, and uh, as you guys can see, it looks very very similar to the Gerber. Um, it's got some good purchase across it. I believe this is an aluminum frame here, and the one thing that Havilon has going for it that the Gerber didn't was the case. So it comes with a case, it comes with the extra blades, and you have a place to put your blades and your knife. I like that the case. blades are actually packaged as here as well versus yeah. those being a loose blade, protecting it from the elements. We kind of talked about that a little bit earlier, but just keeping those super clean, super sharp. Obviously, when you're processing an animal, you don't want to be wiping dirt through it. So yeah. that's, that's a big. Exactly. The, so my experience is what I use right now, um, and I'm sure you'll touch base on this, but to be able to replace this blade is a little more difficult than the Gerber. Yeah, so that would be the trade-off. So with the Gerber, you get a much easier blade replacement, and with the Havilon, you get the sheath. Yep. Um, yep. So I'm actually not gonna take this one on and off on camera, because honestly, it's a bit of a finagle yeah. to get yep. that blade on. You, you can totally do it, but it definitely is a little bit of a yeah, finagle. Yeah, you gotta be really careful, because you could cut yourself pretty Exactly, easily. and if you're backcountry, that's not something that you no, wanna happen. No, you do not wanna worry about that yeah. when you're out <laughs> but, there. But on that note, as far as Havilon goes, this is a preferred knife for most hunters. Oh, I mean, most, absolutely. most hunters I know, if they're not using kind of like the traditional buck stuff, they've got to have a lot in their pocket. Absolutely. Everyone that I know and hunt with, yeah. they, replaceable blades in their pack. and this style is 
all the rage exactly. in the hunting space. Um, and on that note, Havilon makes a ton of different variations for their replaceable stuff. Um, they've got one that's got a bone saw on it. They've got one that's got a, a fixed blade or a, a, just a standard blade on the other side. I mean, they've got all sorts of types in the Havilons. Um, and there's also a ton of different replaceable ones out there. I mean, Kershaw makes one. I think CRKT did or might still make one. But anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, so a lot of different options. Havilon is kind of the preferred for a lot of hunters right now. Absolutely. Yes. Yep, totally. So even though that blade's a little hard to replace, you guys don't know anybody that's cut their hand off with it, right? No. I no. Do not. <laughs> so no, no, nothing to worry about too much. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned the price on that, but that Havilon goes for right around 47 bucks. So That's it's about what I paid for it. Yeah. yeah, it's about 20 bucks more than you're gonna go for that Gerber Vital, but you do get the case and uh, the place to hold the blades. Now, one thing we were talking about though would be nice for these is yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got somewhere to put your fresh blades, but it'd be some, it'd be nice to be able to put spent your blade, right? spent blades as well. So Havilon Gerber, whoever's watching, eh, maybe think about it. <laughs> Step up with the plate. There you go. <laughs> Um, okay, so next up we've got the CRKT home front. This one goes for about 62, 63 bucks. Um, you know, it's got a good belly. Um, it's got the camo handle, so it's got the hunting look to it. One thing that's kind of neat that uh, I know I had shown you guys when you guys mm -hmm. were, came in is that this thing can actually break down and be field cleaned, which is pretty sweet. And that's pretty slick. Pro Hair, probably blood, a nice, yeah, probably a nice little thing when stuff, you're yeah. when you're cleaning an animal. So there's a little wheel here that you spin out. I already started spinning it, and then a little lever here. Let you move that lever, and then the knife comes apart, maybe. There we go. So the knife actually comes apart in three pieces, and then you're able to field clean that. That's really helpful. Which is pretty yeah. sweet. That is slick. I mean, I, I brought in some of my knives that are off camera, but when I was pulling them out, they still had gunk in them. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> I was like, oh. That's why they're not on the table. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like oh, that's from the elk I just, yeah. I just harvested, so. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so this is a nice thing, I think, especially with a folder, to be able to get in, clean it yeah. out, and put it back together right there in the field. Um, and then the same thing with this, you know, this is a, uh, it's not the fanciest blade steel out there, um, but it is a good blade steel that's easy to field sharpen, yep. um, which is a key thing. Because again, I know a lot of hunters, you guys don't nerd out about your blade steels too much. Nope. No. As, long as, as long as it's sharpened, it can be sharpened again and used over long periods of time. That's all it's important. It's got a place in the hunting space. Yeah. Um, so from the CRKT, we make a little bit of a jump, and we jump right up to the Benchmade Grizzly Lid Ridge with the Axis Lock. This one goes for about 124 bucks. Good looking knife. Yeah, yeah it's a great is. knife. I like that. You got G10, you got rubberized grip, um, <clears throat> just kind of solid all the way around. And then how you guys were kind of mentioning when you get into an animal and you start really working, they did put that jimping up on that yeah, top end there. Yep. That spine. So that you can get in and yep. get your fine cuts, and then you have jimping across the back of the spine as well. I like that. To be able to get What's a lot of called? control. This one's the Grizzly Jimping? Ridge. Jimping, yeah. Jimping. Jimping across the over that. here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, it's a good word to use. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad he asked and looked dumb and not me. Uh, <laughs> hey, like I said, I'm supposed to bring the knife expert. These guys are bringing the hunting expert. I'm gonna, I'm gonna we'll see how it turns my out. my next animal. There you go. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, Benchmade Grizzly Ridge, great little knife, uh, great little folder. And uh, you know, one thing with this, you know, we talk about the CRKZ home front, you can strip it apart, and you're talking about having to clean the, the, the mechanism and everything. I've heard some concerns of people worried about this access lock kind of getting dingy and dirty. Hmm. Guys, you, you know how hard I am on my knives. I don't respect them very much. I apologize all the time for it. Um, I've had an access lock in my pocket with that mini access that I had for a long time. Never had a problem with my access lock. So I'm imagining if it did become an issue, just squirt it out, all good. So, yep. great little knife. Um, and that actually takes us to the end of kind of all of our knife stuff. Now don't forget, we've got a giveaway it's a pretty epic giveaway coming up. We're gonna blow through a couple sharpeners really fast and then we'll talk about it. Actually, we've got a dark horse under the table. I forgot about it. All right. Oh yeah. So we've talked about how a lot of hunting guys aren't knife guys, um, which is totally fine. And we talked about kind of use and things like that. We talked about- yep. Yeah, traditional, right? Like a lot of guys go traditional. So at Blade HQ, we do have a lot of these. You notice I just left it in the clam pack because we don't need to have a full discussion. We've got a lot of kits that if you're a first time hunter and you're just looking to get out and just get the job done, these kits go, I mean, this is a $30 kit, right? You got some shears, you got a fixed blade, and you got a folder, um, a big folder. So That's a folder old saw. Timer. Yeah, it's, it's a folder a fold saw. Yeah, it's exactly. a folder saw. Old it, timer. Yeah, it's an old timer, right? Yeah, so, that's again, my grandpa. Exactly. A lot of guys recognizing the name from that. So I just wanted to show you guys, this is also an option that we have at Blade HQ. We got tons of options like this with tons of different variations inside of a pack. If you're a first time hunter, this is a nice, easy way to get into things. Good option. Yeah, good option there. Um, all right, so sharpeners. None of so, which are pull through apparently. Yeah, no, no, no pull throughs, <laughs> no pull throughs here, guys. I got you covered. Uh, so the first one, we're not going to go price here. We're just going to run through kind of favorites. Um, so the first 
favorite that I've seen a lot of guys using, I like a lot, uh, Jamie, our camera guy, likes a lot, is the Derek's WorkSharp um, Guided Field Sharpener. This one's the Benchmade one. It's Benchmade Blue, like, and it's got Benchmade here. That's about the only difference between this and the standard one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool deal. It's got guides here, um, so you've got a 20 degree uh, sharpening here for the rough grit. You've got uh, 20 degree for a little more of a fine grit. Um, if you, you can turn this to oh, different levels of fine or not, rod. or your ceramic rod and uh, sharpener for your um, fishing hooks. Oh, fantastic. Well. Yeah, that's pretty oh. slick. Yeah, and then another really cool feature with this is it's magnetic. You can pull that off and it's got a broadhead wrench or an arrowhead wrench on it as well. No, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so you can get in it. You know, usually you just tighten your arrows by hand. But yeah, I'm, you I'm sure. Be really careful. Yeah. I'm sure every once in a while it'd be nice to right, have a wrench for that, right? Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Those broadheads are just scary, yeah. hair shaving sharp. Like you, you don't want to touch them. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're no so joke. there you are, right there. Right? That's fantastic. Um, Didn't know so yeah, that. kind of a kind of a really neat multi-tool all the way around, and then it does have a a leather strop on it as well, so you can strop to get it even more fine in the field. Kind of an A to Z. How heavy is that? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think it's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's lighter than my five dollar rata sharpener. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's nice. that's not, not too bad, bad right? Like not yeah. too bad. So, so this is this is a really great field option. Whether we're talking about uh, hunting, whether we're talking about uh, just backpacking, camping, whatever we're talking about, really great field sharpener right there. I'm impressed. Yeah. So cool. I'm glad. I'm glad. Maybe maybe we're gonna convert them out of those pull pull throughs, guys. Maybe. Um, <laughs> we'll talk later. Yeah, we'll talk later. <laughs> and that one goes from anywhere 30, 35, 40, right in that range um, for those for those field sharpeners. Next up, we've got nice and classic leather sheath. Um, this is just a spider co. This is the double stuff ceramic po pocket sharpener. Yep. So you got a little bit more of a, a harder grit here, a little bit more of a fine grit here, and just very very classic, nice leather sheet there. Um, and when you talk about pounds, ounces, et cetera, et cetera, this is definitely a very like what I had when I was in scouts. Yeah, I remember exactly. the one had like a little wee blows mark on it. Exactly, wee yeah. blows. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, very 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 light tool and. Uh, but not not as not very fast, right? That's no no that's no, a no, no. You got to have a true hand, exactly. that's for sure, to really put exactly. a good edge on it. And then finally, guys, in our field sharpeners, we've got the Kershaw Ultra Tech. This is a blade diamond sharpener. So you unscrew it here, and then screw it to the back, so you get a nice handle for purchase. And then just like you see in the in the. Uh, chef videos. Yep, <laughs> right? and I carry one of these as well, so I've got the two sharpeners. Okay, so I right use on. that. Pull through, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I use this to really kind of kind of hone that up and put that fine edge awesome. back to, especially broadheads in the field or something like that. If I dump one in the dirt or something happens or I drop my knife and need to touch it up, I've kind of got a two-step process where I can get them Perfect. lethally scary sharp. The other thing yeah. I should say is we use the Rata for our actual broadhead sharpening too. Oh, okay. Well, I just no, probably shouldn't interesting. say that. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how bow guys are, so I can't I can't speak on that, but. Um, so yeah, so this one and this one, guys, it goes for like 17 bucks. So again, nice, nice and expensive. Good option. Low stress, yeah. good option there. Um, all right. Whew. A to Z, that. man, we did it. A to Z, we did it. So we've covered a little bit of everything here. Now, um, we're about to tell you about a super epic giveaway, but I want to give these guys from Mountain Ops just a second. What do you guys do? What's Mountain Ops? What are you guys about? Mountain Ops. Mountain Ops is an outdoor performance supplement brand. That's Ops is outdoor performance supplements. Makes it easy. We've got a complete diverse line of products. Everything from pre-workouts, meal replacements, uh, prebiotics, you name it, we probably have it. Um, we've been around for about four years now and Jake and I are, are fortunate to be a part of that company. We've got some great initiatives as a company, things that we do to give back both towards conservation and the outdoors, as well as helping conquer hunger throughout the world. Right. Uh, every order at mountainops.com donates a vitamin nutritious meal to a child in need. So that's uh, not only is it cool to work for an awesome company that does something we both enjoy, hunting, fishing, etc., but we're able to give back and hopefully make a difference in the world. Totally. So uh, cool thing going on. We talked about it right now. If you guys are interested, head over to mountainops.com. We're running a month-long promotion called Obstober. Obviously, October, Obstober. Haha. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so clever. <laughs> I know, right? We're marketing gurus. Yeah. No, but we've got a ton of incredible gear we're giving away. If you guys are interested in getting into getting into hunting, we're giving away the industry's finest gear. We've got Hoyt bows. We've got Sitka camo, Garmin, Luapold. You name it, we've got it. We're giving away stuff every single day. So head over to our website, check it out. Let us know what you think. Yeah, it's they're giving away some good stuff. I've been following you guys on the gram. See, yeah. and it's already <laughs> I've seen some amazing stuff. Oh so yeah, it's it's really awesome. All right, now on to that sweet promised giveaway. 
All right, so we've got a lot of good hunting stuff on the table. I talked with these guys before they sat down, and we decided what would make a good hunting knife giveaway. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Oh, give don't give that away. Are you gonna get one of these? Oh. Jake's gonna cry here. <laughs> gonna get one of these? Oh. And I think one of these. So we're gonna, we're doing the altitude, Dang, we're doing the grizzly ridge, and we're doing the sharpener, all bench Everything made. I want. Yeah, everything you want. <laughs> we have to enter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. What's the what's the overall value of that? Uh, overall value. Say that, but that's yeah, gotta be overall value on chunk here. Chunk of change. Yeah, you're hitting two two fifty three hundred ish. Right, right around over overall. So value. why doesn't Mountain Ops match that with the two hundred fifty dollar gift do card? It. What? Dude, I love it. Five hundred across the board. Five hundred even. You guys heard it here. This is a huge giveaway. This might be one of the biggest giveaways we've ever done. So we've got the altitude, we've got the grizzly, and we've got the give and we've got the sharpener with two hundred fifty dollar gift card to MountainOps.com. This is gonna be epic. So this is what we need you guys to do. First off, make some comments down, down, down in the comments, okay? Comment on which knives you like, comments on something you wanna know, just, just make some comments, have a conversation. Let's get some stuff yep. going in the comments. Even about Second, that Rata sharpener? Yeah. Those are just qualified. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Be nice to them, they just gave you guys a big gift card. Be nice to them. <laughs> Second thing you need to do, go check out BladeHQ uh, on Instagram. So at BladeHQ on Instagram. We're gonna have all the information about this giveaway on there and uh, you guys can enter to win. Absolutely. So, this is gonna be sweet stuff. Thanks so much for coming. Appreciate it, thank you guys. Yep, thank, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you guys. Make sure to uh, check out our next video. Be coming soon. Thanks. I think we all hit the table at the exact boom. same yep. time. That was fun. We, we, we timed it. We timed it. We got it. Yeah, yeah. dude. You guys killed it. That was great. That was great. <laughs>